previously on the bastard executioner. At this very moment, our king is deciding the fate of Ventresia. But I must ask that you allow me to give counsel before making decisions that could lead to deep regret. The Baron always gave me his ear. I am not my husband. Where's the Baroness? Regretfully on her way to Windsor. She's the one who pleaded for this visit. As you know, when His Majesty calls, all must answer. She left by yesterday. Welcome, Piers Gaviston, trusted advisor to His Majesty, King Edward II. The King has requested that you join him for his midday meal. He is most eager to discuss the future of Montrichia. The rule is in the hands of a frivolous king. There are only two things that would trump such a decision. An heir adventurous. Or marriage to an appointed noble. You are quite aware that I'm already married. I am told that the Lady Truller's consumption grows. You are indeed bold. This wasn't wolves. You've been placed in custody of the court to determine guilt. Guilt of what? Montre Shire will be divided into serfs. Two territories going to the neighboring shires. The coastal area was a castle with fought the miles already. Please, keep the gown as our gift for your loyalty and patience. I'm afraid the gown will soon be of no use, nor the decree of division. I'm with her. This is washing in private, away from my other vestures. Yes, perhaps. Is there anything else in need of washing, my lady? No. The linens are unstained. I know I've put a heavy burden on you, too, Isabel. I'm afraid that nearly two weeks of thought has given me no better sense of how to carry out my deception. Perhaps it's not a deception at all, love. You carry the proof in your basket. Proof of but a single day? Every fertile field needs the sowing of more than one seed to bear a good harvest. Are you suggesting that I open my fertile field to seed sowing? As you know, my lady, to offer advice is above my status. Mm. A hardened rule you would never break. Isabel. Thank you. I am and will always be in your service, Lady Love. Table. Taking to your new duties? Yes, sir. Very well, thank you. And? And I am learning much. Thank you, Shandana. Crush this mixture into powder. Stir in the egg of the red starling. You must lay the paste thin over the scabs. Wait here. 
don't want to risk selling your remedies here? Your physic could request it when I come. It was weary of getting lost in the Black Ox. I suppose your hooded protector might scare away good trait. Yes. He waits in the courts. And your brothers? How are they? As any man would be, trapped in a hole, not need for 12 days. Your oils ease their pain. Some drift to some comfort. And you? How is your pain? It seems no prayer gives me relief from the horror that plays out here. I wish I could give you a remedy for your struggles, Wilkin. But you know in your heart. I, I know nothing in my heart anymore. This one. This one has a crippled heart. And so many dreadful memories. Yeah. She's not trying to hurt the boy or herself at that one time. Use gentle caution, Wilkin. Her angry ghosts push her close to madness. The hour brings the change of guard. Allows us a few minutes to speak openly. Go be young somewhere else, boy. Come. What matter begs sending away the answer? One that concerns us all. I am in need of your skill and confidence. We've learned that when you speak of serving the many, it's only you that reaps the bounty. The fate of Ventreshire hangs by a French thread. Baron Price senses our weakness. He woos the king's favor in the hope that Edward will grant him the land that was once his. A more skill of ours can hold this noble bootlicking. His Majesty has a passion for religious relics. Price possesses an ancient Bible or scroll, some rare holy thing salvaged from a cave off the Nile. It travels to Windsor today. The Baron's gift of devotion to our swayable king. You want us to seize the relic, make it a gift to you? Not seize it. Destroy it. The risk of possession is too great. Bring down the guards, set the wagon afire, burn the Bible and all the other bootlickings inside. 
killing soldiers and destruction of noble goods is no less a risk. The blame will fall with the rebels and the thieves. But Price will not have suspicion if there are but charred remnants that leave no clues. And we're tradesmen. No reason to risk death and blasphemy. I would hope protecting Ventreshire and the rule of our Baroness would be reason enough. But if you need greater cause, to comfort murderers with provisions is a breach of law. You must have some concerns for their welfare to risk serving your own time in the coffin. They are not murderers. I decide what they are. You deliver the pain of that decision. These men were found down trail of the body and unwilling to give true name. That weighs the scale with guilt. But if we burn your Bible, you'll offer a different fate. They will be released from their coffin traps and the sentences reduced to servitude. The slave of the court. They will work off their crime. Then let them wither in their holes until we find another of greater guilt. We will do your harsh deed. You leave within the hour. Wait for Price's caravan off the pond trail to the south of Heaven's Eye. And what of the prisoners? I will draft the bondage letters to Lady Love and she will sign them. Complete your task and they will see the morning sun. Your man grows more disturbed with each new day. Be mindful that he does not become a complication. You should be mindful as well, Chamberlain. Since the Baron's death, you guzzle this new power like sweet mead. Men never make sound choices while drunk. Do you anything else, milady? Baroness, anything else? Yes, Isabel, I may need you to fetch me a second meal. Perhaps a third. It appears that I need to expand my girth with due haste. Lord Gaveston, it is a profound honour to welcome you to our castle. Milas Corbett, Chamberlain of Ventreshire. Thank you, Chamberlain. Is the Baroness with you? Yes, she makes her way to greet you. May I ask why we have the privilege of such an esteemed visitor? Ah, Baroness, you radiate with even more beauty in your beloved Wales. <laughs> Sir Gaveston. A pleasure to see you again. I have missed your words of sincere adoration. You travel with such a humble retinue. Are you here for sport and game? <laughs> That's the secret to my happiness, my lady. Everything I do is sport and game. I was just about to tell your handsome Chamberlain <laughs> that I journey to perform one of my most cherished duties. 
the Declaration of Heirs. So Green Four is our progeny prophet and horoscope. Once he has uh, acquired the proof that you carry as a child of Lord Antris, the king will declare, if it be a male child, he will be given all the rights to rule the shire. <laughs> Thank you, Sir Gaveston. We will let you settle and refresh. Isabel will show you to our guest chamber. Ah, uh, Shamu. Baroness, Sir Corbett. Sorry that I did not share this news with you sooner, dear Milas. But I only became certain of my good fortune while on the trail to Windsor. And of course, as the Earl has said, I could not declare the joyous news until His Majesty has his proof. The happiness I feel for your news heals any wounding of my pride, Baroness. I understand the testing by this this prophet can be quite a disquieting thing. Allow me to be of help in any way that best serves you. Thank you, Chamberlain. It seems you have stirred the imagination of our French visitor. Is that bad, Chamberlain? Devotion serves you. Our Savior blesses you in so many ways. A keen mind, beauty, <laughs> a stature that remains so lithe and petite, even while. What is it that you expect, this gift of an heir? Not until the colder months. It was the blessing of a union hours before Eric's death. As if God himself had filled your womb. Yes. Well, I will give you time alone. I am sure you are in need of your own devotion. I could understand your disregard for English rule. But to boldly deceive in the eyes of God? Well, it is more than your noble status that is in peril, my lady. I have deep concern for your eternal salvation. Renounce this charade presently, and you will suffer no penalty of false words. It will be as if those lies never poured from your tiny mouth. Let us hope, God, and take pity. For when you are found to be a fraud, the king will have your breasts cleaved off, your barren wounds severed, and your head taken by sword. And the honorable and most exiled Earl of Cornwall will be left with my pieces and my land. So Greenfor will need today to prepare his examination. Your first piece of mourning will land in his pot.
This appears to be the best vantage point. Yay. You seem to be growing familiar with the fair nobles of Ventureshire. Our Baroness. Lady Love tries to reason a man with pious devotion and the skill to rough a man's head. As do I. What about our Chamberlain? Need to become his puppets now. Taking all dirty tasks beneath his noble knights. Corbett's abuse of power will have a hard end when the king decides the fate of the Shire. <laughs> we are planted on tender earth here, brother. The weight of secrets will sink us. Everything we've loved will be dead and buried. Anyway, it must be true. What brings this horrid display of bacchanal to my chambers? We're deeply sorry, sir. It seems our good chamberlain sent us here. Yay. With the task of finding out what your need is with this shire. He wishes that you loosen my tongue. Yay. Without. Stranger. Are you mad or just dull witted? Beautiful, truly. I hope these prayers bring you as much peace and joy as your love brings me. The devoted husband, Edward. Lady Price. It was her physic as whack. Ah! <laughs> 
<laughs> now we are through. This is who we are. Welcome, Brett. You knew she was in that wagon. You don't make those kind of mistakes. I did what was required. As did you. We all share the burden to protect the Shire. Hold, hold! Maddox and I were engaged in a friendly demonstration of defense. I was sharing some grappling skills we plied on the Scottish battlefields. No matter. We have news to raise your spirit. Indeed. We took to this Gaveston our most, um, wetted slots. He was of no interest to the Frenchman. You, however, most handsome Chamberlain, were the only temptation he uttered. Me? Oh. I suppose that would have been an obvious turn. He inquired of wives and lovers. They very heavy a point that he would be in his chamber up to supper. Alone. I see. Thank you, lovelies. We are both in need of a peaceful setting. Seems you've had a hard day as well. The slip of a tool, mending the grate on the coffin traps. I hear the Chamberlain has decided to free the prisoners within them. Put the man in servitude. Those prisoners are still in that horrid hole. Yes, an idiot. I will see that the letters are drafted in haste, so I may release them. Thank you. A punisher who concerns himself with the welfare of those he punishes. It is no wonder I often find you in troubled thought. There was a healer at the market earlier. I should see if she has some balm I might put on these scrapes. No one has. Is it your healer? The one that renewed your vow? Yeah, the same woman. This woman has knowledge of nature and its course with humours. Yes, it would be one of her gifts. Are you in need of remedy, Ernest? I am in need of a different kind of wisdom. She is most different. <laughs> now you are the one lost in troubled thought. Mm. Yes. Do you ever feel like you're living the life of another? That God intended you to be someone else? Not greater or more prestige, but truer. Forgive me. I'm afraid this day has robbed me raw of manners. It is a day full of fast rubbings. I will arrange a meet with this healer. Thank you.
The rank of field marshal is a most prestigious ascension for a, a poor village boy from... Well, where did you think so? Ah, yes. And yes, a rise well earned. But as is the way of the world, with veins that flow with not a drop of royal blood, my head is at the rafters of said ascension. Yes. We have much in common, you and I, Milus. We take to the same spot. Indeed, Piers. I feel as if we have been acquainted for many a year. Absolutely. Huh? Your uh, Baroness, if you do not mind me speaking of her, please. We have, we, dear, heard a story, eh? That she was struck with a Baron Wu. Stories change their truth as they travel. Do they? <laughs> a man as clever and resourceful as yourself. I am certain you know all things above and below these castle stones. <laughs> you flatter like a highly polished courtesan, dear Earl. <laughs> Tell me, why Ventrisha? I would think your influence with His Majesty would earn you a far more desirable appointment. And yet you take such effort to secure our humble slice of moss. Forcing the decree of division, traveling all this way to find the proof of Eric's heir. It makes one wonder if you are looking for a place to hide. Uh, yes, well, like you, sweet Milus, I was forced to stir the hive to get the honey. And now the bees, they come to sting. And what faces are on the other end of those stingers? Scots? Marcher barons? It's a weakness, I admit. But my tongue seems to loosen. And my cock rests in an handsome mouth. It seems we share the gift of forwardness as well. No. It would be much more pleasurable if you were on your knees. Do you honestly think I would let dirt brown lips touch a rod that knows only the old or beautiful things? <laughs> Sorte, huh? I'm sure there is a shit scraper in need of a suckling. There's something wrong, my lady. This is foolish. I'm sorry, Master Wayne. This venture, my behavior, this is not who I am. Perhaps it's that other life, the one you believe God intended, trying to find its way and have a word with you. Perhaps. 
talk to the healer. If she brings no ease of your doubt, then we will leave. Yes. Thank you, Lenora. I'll wait down shore. I am piety. No. Never believe that. You are pious, love. God holds you closer than you will ever know. Now tell me, how may I serve you? Take me back now. Yeah. Because the sadness, Honora. What I'm feeling is not sadness. You are safe.
is a part of the thing. Yes. Where have you been? Sorry, my lady. That great woman and her hooded beast stirred my nerves to the call. Your level of madness is not my concern at this moment, maiden. She said to first stir in the powder. Shit. It's piss. This is yes. apparently from a very pregnant wolf. So green four awakes, my lady. It's your eyes needing to be moist on the nest. Tell that French pig I'll be there in due time. Do not come in, pig. Our lady makes herself presentable. It will be but a moment. I hope you know what I'm doing. Ordinance of the Most High King, Edward II of England, and His Grace, the First Earl of Cornwall, Sir Gaveston. I commence the progeny tests. For what outcome do you rate that convinces your prophet I am indeed with child? The pins will rust. The baby's blood will swirl with sick color. And the bone will. What's the bone do? The phallic bone of a goat will soften. Give us a way to touch. The science arts continue to amaze me. Tell us, Tessa, how was your French supper? A very unsatisfying meal. Pig. Ah, there you are. I leave this already all today. When do we get to meet? Patience, when I need. My needs here will grow, depending on you. Both. We understand, right? brother could not ask for more generous sisters. Half-sisters, Frenchman? <laughs> yes. And you shall be the other half. <laughs> examination of the progeny tests, I conclude that Baroness Lady Love Ventress is with child. No. Impossible. This cannot be true. I cannot believe it. This bone does not give way? Yes, well, Proof of the bone test has always suffered accuracy. Then why do you give it? Do they all suffer? Huh? Rusty pins, swirled blood. That woman is not with child. I will place a stake of my good name on that shoes. A wager as worthless as your journey to Ventrisha.
Käse. Sorry, lady, I'm afraid my troubled thoughts wander a bit far today. I understand. My thoughts are beyond wandering. They've taken to a full gallop. <laughs> Yet you seem of better spirit. I am. When you see your healer again, will you share my gratitude for her kindness? A remedy served you then? Yes, it did. The servitude writes for prisoners. Thank you. They can be released? Yes. I'll tend to that presently, Baroness. Gawain. Yes, my love. Is there something? You addressed me as my love. I'm so sorry, Baroness. It was, I assure you, just a slip of my words. I'm not insulted. I'll be more mindful of what I say. Please. I so enjoy your company. I do not want us to grow apart. Thank you. 